Matthew 4, 1 through 11. Satan tempts Jesus. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, afterwards he was hungry. Now, when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone you shall serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. The question is, How much of the Bible have you actually read? Hi, welcome to The Light of Deception. Today we're going to continue in our series about the dangers of extra-biblical doctrine. And this is the series where we're talking about safeguarding yourself against false doctrine. Now, how do you know the difference between what is real and what is not? what is true and what is deceptive. Well, the Word of God is going to lead you in all truths. Just like that scripture said, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, right? So we're going to remember that if we know the Word of God, if we're really fully, the meditation I'm going to talk about is fully knowing the Word of God and thinking about those things. So we're not emptying our mind in a mantra, but we are filling our mind with God's words chapter by chapter, verse by verse, cover to cover. Now that is so important in these days because your adversary, the devil, is out to see who he may devour, isn't he? So he is the false angel of light. He can appear as an angel of light. That's why the site is called the light of deception. He is the false light that many people are being drawn to, just like in the Garden of Eden. So what we're going to talk about today is the percentage of people that are actually reading through the entirety of Scripture. You will find that some Christians are reading portions of Scripture, only the New Testament, um, the positive parts of Scripture, and they're leaving out much, or they're Christians that aren't reading their Bible at all, and they're into more of a feel-good gospel that they're learning from church, more of entertainment, more of a mystical tangible, experimental Christianity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up a little graph from LifeAway. LifeAway made a graph, um, I would believe, in the last six years, um, calculating the number of people in the United States, in America, that are actually reading the Word of God. Now, I don't know much about LifeAway, but they put this graph together, so I'm going to go ahead and use it as a reference point. So I will pull it up. You'll see it up here and then we'll go over it. First it says, how much of the Bible have you personally read? So you're going to make this about you. All of it, which is 9%, and that would be more than once, is 9%. All of it, this is just like once, 11%. I'm going backwards. Almost all of it, 12%. Now, 15% of it is at least half of it. 30%, several passages or stories. 13%, only a few sentences. 10%, none. So, is that surprising that only 9% of Christians at this time, this poll that they took to make this graft is 
all of it more than once 9% or all of it only 11%? Would that be professing Christians that aren't reading through the entirety of scripture? They're even being told at their church that it's just a tool. It's not the inerrancy is it's not the infallible word of God. And so it's so sad because we start dropping out things like Genesis is too controversial. So we're not going to be talking about the, the days of creation and um, Noah and um, Adam and Eve and the fall of mankind and um, Abel and, you know, thinking about those kind of things, Cain and Abel. And those are not found in some people's knowledge because they are not reading through Genesis. And then again, dropping out the end, which would be Revelation, which I've talked about before, which comes of the blessing by reading it. Then you'll know the seasons and the times you're living if you're looking at prophecy and eschatology. I'm just about ready to get into Daniel, the study in Daniel, leaving Ezekiel and going into Daniel. It's so important to know the Word of God in its entirety. Just like the opening scripture that was talking about Satan tempts Jesus. Now, what did Jesus use in his weakness when he hadn't eaten? It was 40 days and 40 nights, right? He was very weak, and the enemy, Satan, was out to deceive him, and he used scripture to combat the lies. That's exactly the example for us as we are going through our trials and tribulations, and you know that this world is getting so dark, and it has been dark, but I mean, the darkness that's coming upon the world um, for biblical Christians is off the chart now. So if you are a conservative Christian, sticking with the word of God, chapter by chapter, verse by verse, you already know that you're going to count the cost, right? So they didn't like Jesus and they hated him. So they're going to, it's the same thing for you. If you are the light in a dark world and you're exposing error, you're going to be hated. Now, moving forward, since we talked about this scripture is going to be talking about making sure that we are understanding that 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work, right? We're not saved by our works, but as you become a Christian, then works just happen, right? That's what you're going to be happening. You're not earning your way, but that is your outward expression of being in the word of God is that the Holy Spirit, right? Um, you're going to have some gifts and that you're going to be able to use those gifts only with God's help. All right, because God is going to, the Holy Spirit will lead you in all truths and you're going to start living your life differently. So what you once used to do is going to be repulsive to you and the sin that you were in for all these years. And then you come to know Jesus and out salvation, you turn from your wicked ways and you go a completely different way and you led, you're leading, you're being led in all truth. So some people, it's an automatic change. Their life is transformed and sometimes it's a process. So the old man that carnal fleshly person dies slowly right and then you're being led step by step and some come to an end of themselves and they're changed and it's still a process because we are not perfect we're going to sin so repentance is one of those things we confess our sins and we turn from our wicked ways and we let jesus lead because he is the way the truth and the life and no man comes to the father except through him now stay tuned because next time I'm going to be talking about the storms of life and putting on the full armor of God. I hope everything that you find at the light of deception will help you stay out of the false light of deception. Until next time, thank you.